Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. As the recording of this Sunday, June 26th, 2022, I'm standing here on a bridge. I will be heading this direction to Bethel, New York, currently just on the outskirts of Hancock, New York, it's a very small community, 35 miles or so from where I am standing, drinking a piping hot caffeinated beverage, is the site of a historic music event that happened in August 1969 by the name of Woodstock. It was not in Woodstock, New York. Originally, it was going to be there, but there were some issues with the location and it ended up being moved to a farm in just on the outskirts of Bethel. I've never been there. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? About 30 miles down that road. I'm pretty excited about this. And the river I was just standing over is the Delaware River. I'm not in the state of Delaware. I'm in the state of New York, but it is given that name. The Upper Delaware Scenic Byway, New York State Route 97. So I am there where that little red dot is and I will be traversing down and then veering off and going over here to the Bethel Woods Center for the Arts, which is the spot of Woodstock. Right there on the outskirts of Bethel. Woodstock is about an hour, hour and a half from here. Fun fact, it wasn't in Woodstock. And as I cruise along this road, I try to put myself in the perspective of those going, not the direction the motorcycle's going, but the way up. So they are leaving the area that I am going to. But basically this road was one of a few different accessible ways up to the music festival that became basically a parking lot. Traffic was so backed up that they just left their cars here and walked, traversed in. 40, what am I saying 40? 400,000 people. Some estimates, half a million people showed up. In reality, I don't know the exact spot where everyone left the, their vehicles. Probably was a little closer to the, the real spot. I'm still probably another 20 miles away. But it was quicker to just walk it and not deal with the traffic jam. So it just turned into a bunch of cars sitting along the along the thoroughfare. And the musical acts had to be helicoptered in, supplies had to be helicoptered in. They told the locals they were expecting about 30 to 40,000, but the organizers were expecting about 200,000. They had sold a lot of tickets. The event eventually became free, more on that later, but they kept it under wraps that they had sold 200 tickets. And the locals thought there were going to be, you know, 30 to 40,000 people. Ten times that many showed up. 400,000 by some accounts. Definitely some beautiful countryside out here. A lot of bridges and scenic beauty. And that's looking out the other window. Just cross through basket. And here's a photo, an example of that traffic jam I was referring to. Everyone just sitting on their cars, and if they're not sitting on the car, they're just walking it into the festival. A lot of people. I'm passing through Calicoon now. It's a pretty cool little town. This old hotel here. A railroad town. Have the train station right over here. I like it. And it's a real beehive of activity down here. That hotel, what I thought was a hotel, is really a pub restaurant. Calicoon is the name of this area. They've had movies here since the 1940s at this theater. Still open. And now approaching the town of Bethel. Home of the 1969 Woodstock Festival. Straight ahead. Drove up another mile or so. And how random is this? A muffler man here in another 
field. Another farmland. Gotta love a good muffler, man. Was not expecting to see one of these out here near the Woodstock site. Still a couple miles away. It's just right here off this thoroughfare. And it looks like some of the local businesses are embracing the theme. It's a country store here. And the post office here in Bethel. Now, as the recording of this, it's a Sunday. So the store is not open, but you can see the peace sign right there. Now turning off the road I was just on onto Herd Road, which is very familiar to me. Over the course of my life, I've always seen photos from this event and watched a lot of the documentaries and videos and whatnot. And this road definitely rings a bell. And where I'm going is to Bethel Woods, Center for the Arts sign right there. Up this direction. There appears to be a museum on site. I parked over in the lot. And here's a general layout of the land. Okay. Festival historic site there. Yasger's Farm Cafe. Yasger was the farmer who gave them permission. Thanks to him, this event was able to take place. And that cafe was named after him. He's passed on many years ago. And there's also a little sculpture over there of some sort. All right, go find this. Can't really see it from the road as best I can tell. I mean, I didn't drive down there, but from this angle, it looks like it's kind of obscured. So I'm not sure if there's an admission fee or anything, but there is this placard. Music festival site, August of 69, has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places back in 2017. Wow, it took him a long time to get on the National Register which means this whole area cannot be changed. It'll be here for future generations to see. All right, it looks as if I could just walk in that gate. The gate is open. This says, meet me at Woodstock, and you can see the sheer magnitude. Well, this is just part of the magnitude of the crowd. The interesting thing about this is the design of the hillside, which is part of the reason they really wanted to use it. I mean, obviously, thanks to the, the farmer for letting them use it. But the acoustics of the slant of the lawn really help. So the stage will be off over that way. And it should still look the same modern day. The wind is blowing this sign. They either just had an event or are setting up for a future event. There's some tents down here. The stage over here. That's kind of neat. Imagine seeing a concert or being a musical act that could perform at the spot of the original Woodstock. That'd be pretty dang neat. This arrow is guiding me to Peace Overlook. See if this angle looks kind of familiar. Wow, look at this massive valley down here. Oh, wow. Okay, this is cool. Imagine yourself in a crowd of almost half a million people. I like that they did this. You are here. So at the moment, I'm standing right there where this little section here is in the Food for Love area, looking down. So you see the incline of the hillside. There was also the Bindy Bazaar, which would have been over that way. And then you got all the backstage where all the musicians that were flown in and they kind of went up to go onto the stage. And the stage would have been down at the bottom of this hill, of this massive incline. So the stage was right down there. Yeah, I like that they did this. So you got me right up here where this yellow arrow is stretching across here. I mean, obviously the people went way farther out than what is even pictured on this because they were over here in the bindy bazaar and then scattered up here you can see all the tents which would be over that way and then the main stage area right there there's also a message tree starting on friday afternoon august 15th and going to monday morning it was going to be a three-day fest but it ended up being four days because of the rain 
450,000 people came to this hillside. The stage was at the bottom of the hill to the right. Six towers made of yellow construction scaffolding held lights, which people climbed up on. And they were kind of in that area there. So right, right over there was where the stage was. I'm gonna walk down there. Here's another peace sign. This is just kind of mind-blowing. You know, it's an event that I've always heard about. I've seen so many different videos on it, and the history of it. It's like unavoidable. One of the most well-known concerts ever to be put on in existence happened right here. Not meant to be of the magnitude and the size that it was, but half a million people later, history was made. And on the backside of what I was just looking at and reading, is the fifth oh, fly just went around me is the 50th anniversary back in 2019 making this the 53rd coming up in about a month will be the 53rd anniversary originally i think it was seven or eight dollars to get in per day 18 20 dollars for the entire weekend and once the people putting on the event and the concert realized that they did not have enough time because of the shifting from the original location where it was going to be in Woodstock and then to another area. This was going to be the third spot. Don't quote me on that. They did not have the time or the resources or the money to build both a stage and fences. So they opted out of the fences and they made the event free. Word spread earlier in that week. And by Wednesday, there were already tens of thousands of people camped out here, even two days before the festivities originally began. And word throughout the nation spread that this was gonna be a free event. And people came out in droves. So many, in fact, that they said another half a million couldn't even get here. They had to put out you know, press releases and advertisements and the word on the street out across the nation, do not show up here. There's no way you can make it because of the traffic jams, and there just was no room on the roads to get in here. Wild. Looking at another photo, so the stage is there. That tree line is about to point the camera at the tree line. But just look at the sheer magnitude of that crowd. And obviously that was taken from an aerial perspective, but that's kind of the angle. So the stage is just down over the little berm there, looking up on the hillside of that crowd that stretches way past those tents and to what now is the modern day museum. So many great documented moments from that, like Janis Joplin backstage, seeing the crowd and it's saying to whoever was standing near, well, there's like a, I'm paraphrasing, there's a lot of people here. I was not alive then, I was born in 74, five years prior. There, I cannot even imagine what it would be like to have the memory saying, I was at Woodstock. I, that's, what a, what a moment. I mean, that's something, that's a conversation at a party that would give you a lot of traction. I don't know what traction it was, but it would, it would be a conversation starter is what I mean. Oh look, there's a peace sign over there in that little dip. Right there. Man, that's so cool. I'm just letting it sink in. Think about it. There was no room anywhere. This was just people upon people upon people. No elbow room. Everyone smushed in here, having a good time, enjoying a few days of music. Something that had never been done by this magnitude, by, a, uh, by leaps and bounds the biggest congregation of people to watch live music. Sitting along here, sometimes standing along here. The stage right there. Wow. Jimi Hendrix rendition of the Star Spangled Banner happened right there. A lot of famous photos from that weekend, but this is probably one of the most 
you know, overused ones, the couple standing here with their blankets around them. I'm not standing in the exact spot, but pretty, pretty close. They were probably a little further up the hill with the camera facing that way. Oh yeah. This is, this is a good spot to have this. Got the peace sign right down the middle there. That's funny, this does not have the fourth day listed on it. I think originally it was only gonna be those three days, but. So many great artists. And I believe Richie Havens was the very first one to perform. And most of the artists on the first day all played acoustically because there was so much rain and mud that they didn't want to have all the, all the equipment with electricity up there. Even though I guess you would have to amplify even an acoustic guitar, but they didn't want the full bands up there. So they saved those for the second day and on. But just look at this lineup. Joplin, Hendrix, CCR, Santana, The Who. Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Blood, Sweat & Tears. It's just an incredible lineup. One artist I would have loved to have seen live would have been Janis Joplin. That was obviously before my time, but what a voice, what a legend. The music of rock and roll would have filled these hillsides. I have to wonder what the locals thought about not only the traffic, but the congestion, the amount of sheer magnitude of people, congregation of folks, what they thought about all this. And they, you know, they could probably sit in their living room and hear the music projecting over the hillside. Added bonus for being a local, except if you had to make run any errands, you couldn't get on the roads. That was one downfall. It might seem kind of odd and pointless, but something I've always wanted to do was stand at the base of the stage and look up the hillside. Because there's just so much footage it was filmed from the stage angle, looking at the artists and the musicians looking up the hill. And I knew one day I'd make it here. I'd never been here before. This was on my list. And to add to that list, I just wanted to stand at the base of the stage and look up the hill. Just something I've always wanted to do. Not the precise pinpointed down to the inch or down to the foot, but you know, the approximate area. So I would guess they have placed these rocks here to symbolize where the stage was. In fact, there's a marker over here with the number six on it. It's like a historical marker. That would be the front of the stage. I'm getting the vibes right now. I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting the vibes. Look at this, look at this. I mean, modern day, it's just an empty field. It's just a grassy region. But go back in time, 30, 53 years. On every angle, every side, just people having a, a just a good time. No major problems. Just people enjoying life. You see a lot of the photos from the stage. You just see a lot of happy faces, a lot of people dancing and kind of singing along. Right in here. Just heads as far as you can see. This guy coming down the hill up here, he's wearing a Woodstock shirt. Pretty awesome. And some rocks have been placed over here. Spells out a few things. Can't make out what this says. S O. SO something, but this is the peace sign there. Peace sign and a D. And then people have stacked up the little rocks there. Another peace sign here, kind of broken up. It's a piece of history, music history, and just, you know, history in general. Fashion history, a lot of fashion came from that weekend. And I never realized until I'm standing here the incline of the road that kind of went backstage. 
Now I knew like the the side of the hill it created like that berm. It's pretty dramatic, but all those photos and videos I've seen, I never realized that there was such a steep incline going back behind the stage, backstage, if you will. The stage began here, and there's this kind of little berm here too. Except this may have been a little more level. You see where that car just went down? That was all just traffic. You couldn't even get back through there. I really have to wonder where the helicopter landed when they were, the artists and music, the musicians were flying in because they couldn't get in because of the traffic. Where'd the helicopter land? Back here somewhere? All right, I'll go check out the museum. This thing is big, carved out here in the grass. With where the stage was in view, this would have been a really good spot. I probably would have been, if I would have been here, I could have been here. Probably would have picked this spot. What a view. The stage is right down there. You can't really hear any faint, ghostly musical instruments permeating over the hillside. But if you're quiet enough, you can almost imagine it. That's people talking at the top of the hill and yelling up there. But you can almost imagine it. Just listen. Now, as incredible as an event it was, it wasn't all perfection. There was not enough restroom facilities. There was not enough food. There's not enough water. The people trudged on, made the best of it. And all in all, it will be remembered as a monumental event in music history. Why are those shaking like that? I mean, I know it's the wind, but wow. It's an overload of shaking. And it was just about to close, but stepping inside the Museum at Bethel Woods Center for the Arts, pretty amazing as you walk in. It's just the display, the way it's all set up with the exhibits and all the information and the history. Definitely recommend if you ever come here and see the spot from the festival to stop in here as well. They have kind of a psychedelic bus, as well as a bug, some artifacts, even some of the clothing the musicians were wearing, things like that. It's a pretty good display. And they even have a little homage to Max, who was the owner of the farm, and gives a little information about him and who he was, and kind of thanking him, because without him, they would not have had a place to have, to have Woodstock 69. Yeah, pretty good little visit here to Bethel, New York, to the site of, I guess, probably the first big music festival. Glad I stopped off. I know most artwork is up for, art, you know, interpretation from the viewer. I'm kind of looking at this as almost like a person with the head, the arms, got a dress on, and legs. That's my interpretation. And also through this area, they have something called the Sullivan Catskills Dove Trail. And this is one of the doves. I see some hearts in there, some upside down hearts and regular hearts that aren't upside down and some trees that are right side up and upside down. Not sure what kind of flowers those are. And I'm driving around to the back of where the stage was all those photos of the traffic all backed up through here. I'm driving over here. So that's the stage would have been right by these trees. And the field is on the other side of these trees. I'm just gonna go along real slow here. 
I mean, I was walking up there, but I'm just doing a little, little driving move here. So there's no parking anytime. And even though this is kind of, well, not really off-site, but away from the main area that they have all marked up, you just imagine people all camped out through here in tents, not even not everyone having a tent, just sleeping on the ground. They had said that they expected most people to leave and come back each day. No one left, you couldn't leave. So it was just a four day conglomeration of people just sleeping wherever they could sleep. Enjoy in the weekend. And there was a lot of people having to bathe. There's photos of people bathing and you know, video documentation and the documentaries and whatnot of people bathing. And this looks like where they would have bathed. Looks very similar to some of those photos of everyone bathing and jumping and you know, playing around in the water. Kind of off to the side here. And now into Bethel proper, into the, well, I would call it the downtown, the, it's a very small community. It's a little homage here, it's Carol's Dream. Aquarium Exposition. Because Woodstock was also gonna be an art fair and Aquarian Exposition, but it was just shortened to Woodstock once the media got a hold of it. There are some McDonald's characters painted on the side of this bus. And some very friendly fries. I had to look it up. The town of Bethel is only 4,000 people. Definitely, we're probably not expecting 400,000 to arrive. But I pulled up the side of the road to check this out. There's a cow over here wearing a cowboy hat and there's also a Bigfoot very reminiscent to my air freshener big the foot got some got some little paintings and murals appropriate to the area even some aliens and some pirates at my destination for the evening. I drove quite a bit today, over 500 miles, about 520 miles, give or take. I have arrived at my accommodations, hotel, for the night. I'm gonna go check in. Get some shut-eye. It's been a long day, a long travel day. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.